Some of this I love speaking about because it's the Bible, but the other is pretty tough. It's tough for all of us, but life is tough sometimes, isn't it? So, Father, open our hearts and our minds to you by your Spirit. Help us to live by your word, inspired by your Spirit, that we may be those folk, Lord God, who bring your kingdom in on this earth. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, that you make us ambassadors for you. And may we fulfill that role in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just want to start off, it goes from Galatians, where I'm, I'm speaking from. Galatians 5, and we'll start with 16 to 26. There could be a little more, but we'll see how we go. So if you're there, either you've got a Bible or you've got a phone or whatever, please turn there with me. And I'll start off, and I want to go through some of these things in a bit more detail. Thank you. Verse 16. So I say, this is Paul's, Paul writing this, so I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. How many of you have been Christians for some time and even I've been a Christian for years and years and years and boy, you will always be challenged with the spirit and the flesh. So if you think you've defeated the fleshly part of you, tell me about it afterwards because I would really like to know how you got through it in a flying colors way. I'm not being negative here, I'm just being real with you to tell you. So uh, we have a desire in our sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to sinful nature. There is this pulling, should I say, apart, but what we want to do over the years is this. There's the flesh and there's the spirit. And as we become Christians year after year, we should be moving more and more, getting rid of the flesh and being more and more in the spirit. That's how it should be. Do we ever get tripped up? Yes, we do. And I'll give you a few things in a little while. Simple. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. There used to be the law was the Old Testament, and there were so many rules and regulations that were added to the law when God gave us the law that Christ came in faith, believing in Jesus, and he fulfilled the law for us. Hallelujah. That is such good news. But I just want to go through one or two things here, maybe to help us all. But, uh, 19, verse 19 says, The acts of the spiritual or sinful nature, the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality. How are you doing? Are you getting things uh, that you shouldn't? Are you looking at TV, which you shouldn't? Are you watching films that you shouldn't? Are you getting involved with things that you shouldn't? Because the Spirit will prompt you. He will be there to help you. He will be there to guide you in everything. And the next thing there is impurity. Now, impurity means this. Something that ruins the un contaminated nature of something. Something that ruins the uncontaminated nature of something. Made me think of silver and gold, where there's infirmities in them and they put them to boiling point and they rake off the grit and the rubbish in them. And they keep doing this to a higher standard and a higher standard until you get, if you like, 22 carat or whatever it may be. But God does that for us too. He actually comes to us and help us each step of the way. And is it painful? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, perhaps some of you have got a bit way to go, Lord. <laughs> just, just, just go get them, Lord. Just go for them. What I'm saying is this. As we get closer to Christ, it seems as if there's more and more things come across to actually distract us or not help us. Debauchery. 
bodily bad behaviour, it says, drinking too much alcohol, taking drugs, etc. And a lot of people will say this to you, oh, I'm only on a, 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 light, a light drug, I'm only on... But I tell you, I know where it leads. Let me tell you why. A friend of ours, Christian family, lovely family, and all he took was... Um, what's, I don't, I'm no good on drugs whatsoever, guys. No, not cocaine, no, Mariana? Mariana? Any, whatever, whatever it is. A really modest drug. But I want to tell you, he took it and took it and took it. And then one day, his mum came home and found him hanging in the garage. Don't let drugs get hold of you. Because when you start on drugs, they will control you. But God wants to control you. And he will give you the strength and the energy to get through. If you will trust in him, his word is so powerful, it will knock drugs on the head. So just believe the word of God and see. That's what it will do. That's debauchery. Idolatry. Do you have idolatry at all? Do you think, oh, I would like that car? Do you make an idol out of anything? Is there anything in your life that you think, yeah, I need to look at this because perhaps, perhaps you're making a God out of something. I know a really good friend, um, well, more of an acquaintance than a friend, and he used to go to church every day of his life, but now he plays golf five hours a day. I wonder who is God. I wonder who is God. Is anything in your life which is on top of what God wants of you. Forget it. Come to Jesus Christ and know he should be Lord of all. Not some, all. And over a period of time, I can tell you, God is so good to us. Witchcraft. Spirits that oppose opposite to Christ. Witchcraft. Don't get involved with things that are not godly in the spiritual realm. Hatred. Someone done anything to you, which is uh, you, you're hurt and you can't forgive them, you can't forget it, you keep on thinking about it all the time. Let me say this. The more you keep thinking about it, you will gradually pull it close to yourself, so it's sort of the size of a brick if you looked at it there. But over the time, you get it more and more and more, can't control it more and more, and it will be right before your eyes like a double-decker bus. Why? Because you're putting it out of proportion to what it should be. Let God be the God you leave your rubbish with. Tell him about it. He longs you to tell him the truth about it. He knows that anyway. So don't think, and I've shared this before, but this really staggered me when a lady came to me in this church and said, Terry, what about my, my private sins? What about that? I said, you haven't got any. You haven't got any. You need to become truthful with God. Tell him what you're struggling with. Tell him you need help. Tell him that you've got it wrong. Don't let there be hatred, because hatred will always ruin you. Always. Always. Discord. Disagreement. Strife to say or do some things which, which cause distrust among others, which result in arguments. I'm telling you this is from, these things are from the internet, where I get them from the dictionary to know exactly what it says. Don't go and have strife. Don't go to these things in discord and result in arguments. Be kind, be helpful to one another. Selfish ambition. I'm just going through these because they're all in this verse. Selfish ambition. Ambition is fine. But self is never fine when it comes to Jesus Christ because you put others first. So ambition is okay. But selfishness, selfish ambition, is where you want to be top of the tree. You want to be there. Don't do it. Don't do it. A selfish driving force, dissensions this is, a selfish driving force that does not see resolution or reconciliation. We should always, in our hearts, want reconciliation. No matter what's happened, no matter what it is, we should want to reconcile these things. 
factions, a group within a group that has different opinions and ideas. We get that sometimes in the church. You get a group that think, do you know, I could do that much better than Terry and Nate. I could do that on a much, much better thing footing. I wouldn't do that if I were them. And then you'll get a few click come along and they'll all start disagreeing. And do you know what? It makes Terry and Nate's life a pig. <laughs> it really does. Because what, when, you, when you're trying to help people, when you're trying to love people, it's part of it being a, being a uh, if you like, here in, in leadership, but it's painful. I don't make any bones about it. Being in this position is the most painful thing I've ever done in my life. Ever. Ever. You sow love, and you get a kick in the teeth. And, and honestly, that's part of it. Did they kick Jesus in the teeth? Yes, yes, yes. And so envy, don't envy anyone. Don't have drunkenness or orgies. I'm just going to read this part to you. The acts of sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But, this is lovely, but beware underlying truth. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Totally opposite. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Love to enjoy the Lord Jesus Christ and enjoy fellowship with one another. Wanting the best for one another. Wanting these things that perhaps you've been involved with in the past to be gone. Helpful to one another. Being truthful with one another. Love is a doing word. Love is a word that wants the best for us. Love, like Jesus, loves us. It's the fruit of the Spirit. And joy. Have you got joy in your heart? Sometimes it does. Life will draw, drag you down. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. You can find peace, and this is the next word, peace. You can find peace when there's calamity all around you. Everything doesn't have to be perfect for you to have peace. Because we go through a lot of things, but in Christ's name, we can have peace in him when things around us are not peaceful because he has overcome us for us. Patience. How is your patience? Not too bad, I heard someone say. Not, is there room for improvement? Yes. There's two people who could improve, but the rest of you are liars. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's be truthful. Patience, kindness. Could we be more kind sometimes in our thoughts, in our deeds and what we're doing? Kindness. Yeah? What do you reckon? Yeah? We could be more kind. We could pray perhaps for others more. We could give more. We could be kind in so many, many ways. Goodness. Lovely, wonderful goodness. Faithfulness. Faithful friends, very often it's said, if you can count five people as friends who are faithful, you're doing better than most people. Who are faithful in the ups and the downs, faithful when you've got it wrong. They'll still stand before you, they'll still stand with you, they'll still help you. When they know you've got it wrong, they'll still be there for you. That's the sort of friend you want. That's the friend Jesus Christ is for me. When I get it wrong, he doesn't chuck me on the rubbish dump. When I get it wrong, he's there for me. He holds out a hand for me. He says, Terry, I'm for you, not against you. Come and repent if you've got it wrong and allow him to help us in all these different ways. Against such things there is no law, but those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. That's this little piece here. 
let's do things in life which are so good. Do you know, Nita and I, we have done over the past quite a lot of walking in our time. And I can remember when we were walking at Stoke by Nayland, and we came to this stile, and there, just, just right there, as big as this, was in red paint on a rough board, and it had run down as they painted it, ball in field. And I thought, oh my goodness, what have we got to face here? And so I said to Neat, I'm not going to walk back about a mile and a half to get on a different track. What I'll do, you stay to the other side of the thing, and I'll go and see if I can find a bull in this field. And I looked, and I couldn't see one anywhere. I looked all round, and I couldn't. But I said, if there is one, I'll hump you over the fence there, which is about <laughs> six foot, <laughs> and I'll run as fast as I can to get out of the way. So anyway, this, I can tell you, I had my eyes about me everywhere. The way this was written, it meant business. It really meant business. And so we got across the field, and the, the style, the other side of the field, had this massive notice over it too, bull in field. And I thought, that, that doesn't seem right to me somehow. It's a footpath going through this estate, and yet we're not... So on the Monday morning, I got onto the council, and I said to them, is this correct? Do you know what's happening? Do, do, do. Anyway, I spoke to the guy and he said, I'll tell you what, he said, tomorrow, the council, he said, I'm going to go and have a look at that. So he did, and he phoned me up two days later, and he said, no, that should not be. If there was a, a bull which was very, very rough in the field, it should not be on a public footpath. You should not be. Anyway, it turned out that the people, the farmer, he didn't want people going around that footpath past his house. And so in, they, they pulled the things down, the council did, and told him never, ever to do this again. Why am I saying this with you? Because there will always be things of this world which will try and put uh, a bull in your lives, OK? <laughs> and read it where you can. Why I'm saying this, very often what you read or what you see can make you feel oh, gosh, I daren't do this or what. But let me say, Jesus Christ, in him, you in him, you're an overcomer. You're an overcomer. Sometimes these are just signs. They're not the real thing. And so just be aware God wants the best for you. This reminded me, this walk, a little bit of Pilgrim's Progress, thinking, yeah, these things, there's 14 things I mentioned there today. Can you imagine your sat-nav saying at the roundabout, take the 14th exit? What do I mean by that? Don't take the exit where there's witchcraft. Don't take the exit where there's hatred. Don't take the exit where there's selfish ambition, all these things. Get the right, on the right path with Christ. Be in the right way with him. Let him rule and reign in your heart. Because it says here, live by the Spirit. Do you know what that really means? It really means being controlled by the Spirit. Don't keep going down those roads you used to be on. Get change in your life. Mean it. Do it. Get on with it. Because Christ in you will help you change. Well, he has me. He really will. He loves you that much. He loves you so, so much. He wants the very best for you that this world can offer. He really does. His love for us is just so, so amazing. And he died to set us free from the law of sin and death. So when you or I do get it wrong, Jesus Christ has put it right. Always remember, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no way to the Father except through him. Perhaps today you've heard this all before, you've looked at it and you've thought, this isn't for me. Just make sure you really, really understand what Christ has done. You would give anything if you were in university or whatever for a tutor to come along to you and say, look, I'll give you two hours a day private tuition. Because you know if you've got a good 
good too to that. He will help you. He will guide you. He will direct you. And that's what Jesus wants to do every day of your life. Will you have troubles in life? Yes, yes, and more yes. You really will. But take heart, Christ has overcome. And Christ living in you, you're an overcomer. A lot of people, they just think it's, it's a drudge, it's, it's Christianity. Leave it. I just don't want nothing to do with it. Well, I used to think that. But when I've really understood the Spirit and how he wants to help us, bless us, guide us, comfort us, all these words here, live by the Spirit. I'll say them again. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Sometimes it's difficult to control self, isn't it? Self wants to overrule. Self wants to do it their way. Self wants to come and, do, and Jesus Christ is saying, don't take that exit on that roundabout. Don't take it. You take the one that leads to goodness, wholeness, the fruit of the Spirit. Now, Jesus Christ knows the last page in the book. He knows what will happen. But you need to know and understand he is for you, not against you. He wants us to be those people who walk in the Spirit, who love the Lord with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength, and love our neighbor as ourselves. I'll just finish with this still from Galatians, Galatians 6, verse 7. Do not be deceived. God cannot God cannot be mocked. A man or woman reaps what they sow. You reap what you sow. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. Destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And brothers and sisters, I'd say to you, one of the main things in the times that we're going through, don't give up. Never give up. You keep going in your faith with Jesus Christ because he is so for you. Don't give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. Who many? All people especially those who belong to the family of believers. We want to treat those who are of believers a little bit better than we treat others. So you want to be blessed, know a brother and sister who, who will help you along life's way. They'll be there for you. And Jesus Christ is there for you 24-7. His telephone wire is never, ever too busy. He's there for you each step of the way. So today, make a decision. Make a decision to come and allow Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life. He loves you through and through. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>